Brown University. <clears throat> On Saturday of last week, uh, there appeared an article in several prominent newspapers uh, which reported on several groups and individuals urging that I become a candidate for the presidency of the United States in the 1968 elections. I must confess that I was quite surprised by these sentiments and find it very hard to take them seriously. Congress find both the courage and the votes to once again move our nation toward a truly great society for every citizen. It is understandable that this war is tending to create a fluid political situation. Should this fantastically unwise and futile war continue to escalate toward World War III and perhaps humanity's extermination, and should the campaign for racial equality be further starved, rebuked, and forgotten, our country inevitably will be facing national disaster. Such circumstances may well cause profound and broad-based political realignments and make relevant an independent candidacy. But even so, I do not conceive of this as my role. I reiterate I have no interest in any political candidacy, and I am issuing this statement to remove doubts of my position on this subject. Well, I think of a number of persons, but as I said, I'm hoping, and I'm sure millions of other people are hoping, that the war in Vietnam will come to an end in the not too distant future and before the 1968 elections and that it would not be necessary to have an independent candidacy. Upon what are you basing your hopes, Dr. King? You mean for an end? end well, I don't have anything at this particular time to base my hope on in the light of the fact that we escalated uh, the war yesterday by bombing MiG bases. Uh, this is a further tragic uh, escalation of that war, and that uh, brings a new pessimism into being. However, I do feel that uh, millions of people are going to continue to oppose this war very vigorously, and I think uh, added to those who are already opposing it will be millions of other people. This seems to me to be the hope, that there will be enough people developing opposition to the war that we may well be able to cause the administration to see that it must change its policy and move more toward de-escalation than toward escalation. Well, I'm not, I'm not speaking of any particular individual now. As you know, I don't endorse candidates. Uh, this has been the policy of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference from its inception, uh, so that uh, I will not be endorsing candidates. I will continue to follow uh, my same policy at that point and our policy as an organization. Dr. King, the other day in Tallahassee, Stokely Carmichael uh, indicated that you and he had just a rough post month. Is this true? But I'm not sure what he was uh, referring to. Are you at that agreement, point. Uh, as far as the civil rights struggle is concerned, on how to fight it? Oh, we agree on some things, some things we don't agree on. I'm sure we're in agreement on the war in Vietnam. We certainly want to see that war come to an end. And uh, we are in our economic power to achieve our legitimate goals. This uh, we've all been working for uh, across the years. Now, if at any point Mr. Carmichael would advocate violence, I'm absolutely opposed to that. Uh, my position is very clear on it. I think uh, nothing could be more tragic than for the Negro to turn to violence uh, at this time because we could not win a violent struggle. We have neither the instruments uh, nor the techniques to win a violent struggle. And if we are trying to establish a brotherly society, then we must use methods to establish that society uh, which will make brotherhood a reality. So I couldn't advocate violence. Do you feel that 
Stokely Carmichael advocates violence? Well, in my presence, he's never advocated violence. He's merely said that the question of violence and nonviolence is irrelevant. So I can't say that he's ever advocated violence in my presence, and I've talked with him privately on many occasions. Now, uh, the press has carried statements uh, that he purportedly made uh, that advocated violence. So there is a conflict between what he said to me privately and what has been reported in the press. Do you see any and, connection, Dr. King, between the civil disturbances which occurred after Mr. Carmichael has spoken, such as in Nashville, uh, and his speech, or his presence on a, a particular scene or location? I don't know about uh, that situation enough to really uh, draw any basic conclusion other than uh, conditions existed in Nashville which went far beyond Stokely Carmichael and it's very easy to pick out a person and blame every riot that develops on that particular person. Riots develop because of conditions that exist in our society. Conditions of poverty in the ghetto, conditions of police brutality, in certain situations, conditions of disenchantment on the part of young people and others, and uh, despair, so that I don't think we can point to any individual and say that's a cause of a riot. We will have to look at the real and basic cause, and I think these conditions of economic deprivation and social isolation and psychological frustration are much more at the root of our riots uh, than uh, any particular individual who may make an inciting speech at a time. I do not want to give the impression that I feel a Negro is not capable of being president. There are many Negroes who are capable this day and were capable yesterday and day before yesterday and many days in the past. Uh, but because of prejudices and narrow-mindedness, Negroes have been held out of uh, the political arena uh, and certainly held out of uh, the presidency. But I do think that the day will come in the not too distant future when the Negro vote itself will be powerful enough to be in a coalition with uh, liberals in the white community and thereby elect a Negro president of the United States. Question back to you. Would you expand on your earlier statements that the United States is on the wrong side of the world revolution and explain to me what you consider to be the two sides? Yes, I think uh, one of the most obvious facts, well, number one, uh, everybody knows that my views are absolutely opposed to the views of Mr. Wallace. Uh, I think Mr. Wallace uh, represents a kind of 18th century thinking that has no place in the 20th century. And I think a candidacy for the president on the part of Mr. Wallace would only confuse the minds of many people. It would appeal mainly to extremist elements in our society. And uh, I think it would create the atmosphere for new bigotry, new hatred, and ultimately uh, new violence. So I think a candidacy on the part of Mr. Wallace would be uh, a very tragic and he would still go down his road of trying to turn the clock of history back, which he can never do. And certainly nobody fears Governor Wallace, uh, former Governor Wallace, winning as President of the United States. But just the candidacy itself, I think, will arouse a lot of things that we don't need alive today because I hope we're moving toward that glad day of brotherhood when every man will respect the dignity and worth of human personality. all over this country. I know the mood of students. And if this war had ended, I think this is going to happen. And I think if Cassius Clay or Muhammad Ali is jailed, uh, it will stimulate more activity against the draft. And it will cause many Negroes who are going to have to face this issue to not to uh, go into the army. I was talking with a young man on the plane last night who was just coming out of the army. He had been in Vietnam two years.